Yeah, hi. Uh, thank you for taking your time out and joining today where we present you on how do you recalibrate the security operation center, right? Security is no more an afterthought, right? As far as today's digital world is concerned. People are considering intrinsic security and zero trust uh, security framework to make uh, their, their digital transformation better, agile, and much secure. So today we have an elite uh, panel, including uh, you know, eminent personalities uh, from, from the government sector who present their view on what do they feel about the entire security operation center and what kind of risks uh, they see while they implement uh, their digital ideas, right? So along with me, uh, we have our technology partner, Technitech Solutions, uh, CTO, Mr. Mohit Makor, and they are a new age uh, cybersecurity startup, and they will present their perspective from how do you implement, uh, you know, security, which is intrinsic and more uh, built in rather than built on. I also have a cybersecurity expert, uh, Mr. Shifan D'Souza, who, who is a solution architect with VMware. And uh, he will present on what, what uh, VMware offers as a technology to, to implement uh, the security practices in the organization. And myself, Nilesh Goradia, I, I represent VMware, and I am the technical lead uh, for the state government uh, business for VMware India. So now I would like to call upon uh, Stephen D'Souza, who is a cybersecurity expert and also a solution architect uh, with VMware to present on uh, what are the current challenges and how as, an, uh, as a technology organization, uh, VMware can help uh, customers to solve the challenges surrounding security. So over to you, Stephen, thank you. Uh Thanks, thanks, Nilesh. Thanks a lot. Uh, welcome, distinguished uh, panelists, and welcome to everybody. Uh, my name is Stephen D'Souza, and I am a senior systems engineer in networking and security business unit at VMware and handle pre sales from the West and North uh, perspective. So, welcome to the session. And uh, uh, what I'm going to talk about is the future ready security operating system, uh, center, right? And uh, uh, we are going to talk about really how uh, the security operating center is really going to evolve in a world uh, where we have an increasing distributed uh, workforce. Uh, and, and with the, as they all you know, like a lot of people are moving, enterprises are moving the cloud. So with the increase in the adoption of public and private clouds, uh, it, it, it itself brings in, a, uh, itself brings in a basically unique challenges, right? So uh without much uh, ado i'll just uh, jump in right into the presentation so in our view there are really five challenges facing security operation teams today right uh the first being uh we are basically quickly moving beyond perimeters and this is being felt especially today with the current pandemic that we all are facing right you must be knowing that and and if you look at it also even prior to that, to this, uh, we have always heading towards this direction. And the implication, implications of this is that the increasing amount of activity that we have to observe, right? Now we have workloads running on-prem, on public clouds. And also with this, now the surface that we have to protect is, is not observable from our current corporate network and campus. So this itself is, is, is a big challenge, right? The second uh, the challenge is beyond malware, right? It's, 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 it's if you look at it, uh, historically we had to deal with malware and malware that had a lot of variants and new forms of malware. Uh, and, and with all these new form of variants and, and different types of malware, we had to come up with different techniques to spot, the, spot them, whether they're malware, or perhaps, perhaps a new variant, but now we're entering a world of ransomware and fileless attacks. What I mean by fileless attacks is nothing but uh, non-malware attacks, right? So, so basically, the attacker does not download any file on a malware file onto your system and then you know initiates the attacks, but it is basically fileless, and and this is and it's becoming increasing important to understand behavior now, 
right? Because it's it's more about understanding software being used maliciously uh, and not just malicious software. What I mean by this is uh, now the attackers or the bad guys are basically using authorized application and protocols to basically uh, breach your applications and 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 you know expirate data from your environments, right? So this is the big challenges for what we are facing today. Attackers are getting more and more sophisticated. Security is basically always mostly in the catch up uh, phase, right? And, and, and if you look at it, the third, third aspect is there are too many tools, right? The average security operating teams are dealing with around more than 50 to 100 tools. And, and it's interesting to note that Gartner says that 90% of, of breaches, leverage, misconfiguration, and misalignment of uh, controls, right? And, and this is becoming itself, itself, itself a big, big problem, right? And it, other than anything else. So the fourth uh, problem here is to that do with is that there are too many silos, right? Security team, security basically is a team sport, right? Uh, security cannot be just solved by the security operation team right it's the networking team that's involved it's the infrastructure team that is involved right it's the identity team that and also the end user team right so so all of them pay, play a role it plays a significant uh, or, or is, is basically is very significant in operationalization of security basically they are the ones that you know do all the hardening uh, basically they also you know, are involved in operationalizing the policies, and that's actually critical on many fronts, both to have an efficient high leverage team, right? And and these are also teams that know how to balance things uh, with the validity of the resource that they have on hand. But the challenges we face is uh, more to do with that these teams have their own tools, talk their own language, right? So all these teams I just spoke about, whether it's networking, it is whether it is the identity teams or the infra team, they all have their own tools and they, are, they, you know, they all talk their own language and have all this own sources of truth, if you, if you can say so. So you know now have that old expression, it's okay to have your own opinion, but it's not okay to have your own facts, right? And we, and we have to solve, right? so we have too many silos, too many tools, too many different teams having their own uh, approach towards uh, security, right? And, and the last, uh, 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 issue or, or the last uh, problem or challenge that is being faced is, is related to uh, too little context, right? Uh, the, uh, the expressions that we use to say we cannot manage what you don't understand. Obviously, you cannot take care of a threat if you don't understand the threat, right? But it also means that we cannot secure what we don't understand either, right? So, so what I want to say is uh, that really this has two parts to it right uh, certainly it's about threat context it's very important today with the sophisticated attacks to know have context about the attack that is being you know originated into your environment right and and, and from what the security industry has generally been poor at is is the context about things right you are defending the application and infrastructure context but without that you actually have can't harden you can't understand threat context or respond effectively. So it's very important to know what you're dealing with to take uh, you know, action, preventive action or, or remediation against these sophisticated uh, attacks, right? So if you look at it, these uh, five problems are really making security incident detection and response and the whole world of security response quite difficult, right? For the, the SOC teams, right? And, and if you look at it, uh, uh, from a security operation team perspective, really it's all about uh, these three three interconnected processes, right? They need to have visibility. Uh, uh, one second. They need to have visibility um, to identify risk so that they can harden the environment, right? And, and to also string the attack surface. And then they also have to look at prevention. So they, they, they somehow have to basically get in, in, in into the mode of preventing and intercepting malware on, or, or malware, non-malware attacks. Uh, and if that fails, then they simply have to go uh, about, you know, or have that ability to detect, investigate, and respond, right? So, 
so it's 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 these three integrated process which is very very important from uh, from reacting to today's uh, threats that these bad actors uh, originate onto your environment right so now with each of these becomes a it becomes very more very very expansive right you have so many tools in your environment uh, and and by the time you you get to detect and respond we have to have to deal with a whole new campaign that is going on and the risk and stakes actually goes up but what is important is that these all have to be connected right each of them has to provide context to help the other be better and when we finish one we should use that to inform the others right so so basically if one tool get some information it should basically pass on it to the other inform uh, other tools around so that basically they can uh, help in basically mitigating the attack right so if uh, if if we are detecting and responding we should be learning out of the investigation and using that to improve our hardening and prevention so so it's very important to have a, a solution which, which which basically shares information amongst themselves but uh, in, in in today's world in a world where we are being using dozens uh, of tools each sort of having their own silos right and having their own management consoles their own policies to be aligned right each of them having their own agents their own sensors we are basically collecting almost <clears throat> the same information over and over again right and, and this is really part of the problem and one of the challenges so the three things uh, in our view have to happen here is one we need to start looking at consolidating not one product to rule all of them but uh, some of them have to shrink and we need to find ways where products are interconnected right so all these products whatever using should be integrated pass on information and we should not we should not be and we should stop thinking them of these as silos right so it's the the, the point you are making is to consolidate control agents collect things once right and second thing we have to start shifting the kind of data we are collecting and the analytics to deal with the reality that we are just not looking of okay, looking for malicious software but software being used maliciously see what i talked about the the fileless uh, attacks right and that means increased uh, use of behavioral analytics, machine learning, AI, and collecting the raw data and not just their uh, alerts and events, but uh, what is really happening on our endpoints, on our workloads and, and network, right? And, and lastly, as it's becoming uh, increasingly important is that as the problem becomes increasingly distributed and even as the SOC teams is becoming incre increasing distributed. There are huge advantages of starting do doing this on the cloud, right? As opposed to uh, funneling everything back into some physical location in our data center. That also gives us the ability to look at more types of data and bringing uh, more compute capacity to things like machine learning and AI, right? So this is what we are trying to do with Carbon Black Cloud. Today we I have roughly around 20,000 customers and approximately around 16,000 of carbon black uh, are, are cloud customers, right? So this is really been the heart of it, uh, which is which is basically uh, carbon blacking having a series of modules for identity, uh, uh, basically uh, what I'm monitoring is, is uh, identifying risk like audit, right, and remediation. So what it means is it's basically a, a, a module which basically understands the state and configuration of the system. Then we have the next generation AV for prevention of malware and non-malware. And, and, and lastly, we have EDR for detection and response. And, and this is all related to a single uh, lightweight sensor to collect the data once, not overlapping as I showed you in my previous uh, slide. And, and to support the use cases, be it uh, on a Mac or a Windows or Linux or, or you name it, right? Or any any public cloud, right? Or Azure or Google or et cetera. And also uh, last year in VMworld 2020, uh, we have made some announcements uh, of how this is getting expanded. Uh, new models like uh, vulnerability management, uh, 
it's a very in innovative approach to vulnerability manage has been now built into the solution we we are starting off with workloads particularly on vcvi environment uh, so there is no agent here involved uh, and we are leveraging the sensors that are now uh, embedded into uh, the hypervisor right and we are prioritizing vulnerabilities not just on their cvss uh, scores but uh, with exploits and exposing this information to the security operation team and carbon black cloud and also to the it team inside vcenter right so we are adding modules uh, around for k8 that is communities for policy governance and control uh, providing the ability to guardrail around your K8 instances and how they are configured and set up also, right? And we also added device control for your user machines, right? Uh, and, 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 you, and, you, and you can see at the bottom, we are making all of this uh, carbon black agent list, uh, on vSphere, right? That is your VMware cloud on... Right? So we uh, can you put yourself on mute, please? Yeah, so we are making this agent list on vSphere on, on VMware Cloud Foundation as well as uh, a Horizon virtual desktop running on vSphere. Now, all these platforms are essentially carbon black sensors. You're not adding anything to it. So as Neely said, it's, it's basically intrinsically built in, not bolted on. And we have this functionality. You just have to activate and turn it on, right? So, so it's 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 security that we're building into the environment. Uh, it's it's not as an add-on, and you just have to simply go and turn it on, right? So, uh, we are doing a lot of uh, integrations uh, uh, to break down the silos, uh, taking pieces of carbon black context capabilities and integrating it right uh, and exposing it into vSphere. Uh, v Center, Horizon, and 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 maybe somewhere uh, maybe mid uh, this year we'd be also integrating it with uh, 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 network and security virtualizing platform NSX, right? So good good example of this is uh, the work we have done with vulnerability management, where it is not only exposed in, inside Carbon Black Cloud, uh, right? It is also inside exposed inside V Center because ultimately it's the V vSphere admins uh, that are patching and hardening these workloads and exposing that to them and doing that as a vulnerability emerges not only allows them uh, and to have this huge window where the workloads are vulnerable but but to see it when it happens so now even the vSphere admins are now able to see uh, whether they are by having this vulnerability management built into the system, you, they are able to see whether the workloads uh, are, are, are actually vulnerable and they can actually see when it, that actually happens, right? And the vulnerabilities may not necessarily be new, but uh, maybe it, it may be related to someone is changing a workload that may put it in a vulnerable state, right? Uh, and 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 now you can also see that actually as it happens from, from the vCenter itself. Uh, so that's what... Uh, uh, we are trying to bring in something which is intrinsically built into the system rather than some a separate solution. So looking ahead uh, at this whole area of security incidents detection and response, uh, which is obviously a very critical part of security operations. Uh, and here the challenge what we see is we need to have increasing uh, uh, looking at the threats from a security operations center for more from more angles, right? If you if you will, right? Rather, you should see it all from from various uh, perspective, right? Because uh, when you think of protecting uh, maybe a healthcare uh, uh, system or maybe any critical application, all the angle that matters are, are the workload that compose uh, this system and how they talk to each other, right? How they talk to each other, network services they consume, the users that connect to them the devices they are using uh, to connect onto them these applications right and it's important to understand all these angles right because uh, candidly an attacker does not attack the network they basically attack the application uh, and the data and often they touch multiple parts of this chain right so uh, and that's opening a door uh, for expanding our view right uh, we obviously started with edr uh, that endpoint detection and revision and carbon black actually pioneered uh, this field right we recently started expanding into 
uh, network uh, detection and remediation with the acquisition of uh, uh, last line. But the next year is to think about an XDR, right? So XDR is nothing but extended detection and response. And we have to start thinking about a unified uh, incident detection and response strategy, right? Uh, that collects a, a, a correlated telemetry from multiple angles, uh, uh, workloads, network applications, uh, and, and you have to think about uh, enforcing policy uh, on all these, right? All these points, right? Whether it is a workload, a network from a single place, right? Rather than having multiple solutions. So now our strategy uh, for XDR is quite far reaching. It, it starts with what we are doing with carbon back cloud, right? Uh, and that becomes our basis for our XDR cloud platform. We, we will start seeing happening is uh, us leveraging multiple points, starting with the VMware infrastructure and, and control points and expanding from here, right? So starting to expand beyond the endpoint and workload, for example, today we can enforce uh, uh, policy from carbon black cloud to workspace one and make an enforcement uh, on use ex user access, but you can see over time, we can do similar things uh, with NSX, with Tanzu. Tanzu is a, 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 a platform where you, uh, you build, operate, and run your Kubernetes, right? So we have different flavors of Tanzu. It's TKG, TKGI, but TKG is nothing but Tanzu Kubernetes grid, where you can run and operate your uh, Kubernetes environment uh, on premises as well as the cloud, right? Uh, so, so the second part is more about uh, how we more broadly thinking about threat intelligence, right? Uh, now, our threat intelligence, threat, we have our own threat analyst unit, right? That we are steadily building out, and now we have also added uh, uh, not just endpoint and workload threat analyst, but we also have last line with the last line acquisition. We have added network threat analysis, uh, and, and we are thinking of a team that is looking at threats from multiple dimensions, right? So it, it's not only from your endpoint and your workloads. It's also we're looking at threats uh, from the network point of view also, right? So that's that's what uh, our NDR uh, last line acquisition will help in, 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 in building a very secure environment in your data center, be it your on-prem or, or public clouds, right? The third element is uh, uh, XDR enabled controls. Uh, by that, I mean, is thinking about things like, uh, you know, service defined firewalls, right? Uh, consuming telemetry from multiple sources. So this one firewalls is, is an aspect from, from NSX. Uh, you have your di distributed firewalling and what Nilesh uh, spoke about earlier, zero trust security, we have IDS, IPS, Etc. Right. So, getting all uh, uh, telemetry from all these multiple sources. Right. The next strategy was uh, is 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 more about XDR enabled infrastructure where we take many of these controls and embed embed it right into the infrastructure itself. As I, I told you earlier, is intrinsically built so that they are out of box, fully instrumented for this. Right. So you don't have to do uh, addition of any other security solutions to meet uh, your security requirements now from a SOX perspective. A good example of this is we have launched the advanced security suite for vCloud Foundation. Uh, uh, so we are embedding all these components of Carbon Black uh, and NSX is also there. So we have a full cloud workload protection out of the box with uh, vCloud Foundation. Lastly, we have, uh, uh, we have the ecosystem and the partners where we have been dealing with uh, uh, your security uh, orchestration and automation and remediation and, and SIEM, right? Uh, your service management controls and all on, any other type of controls, right? So threat intelligence allow, allowing us to expand this and, and, and you can think of these five components working together, right? All of these five components, what I just spoke on working together, the threat intelligence as we expand this gives us more accurate detection now. Uh, 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 and then if you look at the XDR cloud platform, which will enable us to 
to respond faster or, or you can basically have much faster investigation than response the controls uh, as they become xdr enable become more accurate uh, they become more surgical uh, and now this infrastructure is all all built in so this this is uh, what is the future uh, from a, a SOC perspective where now you, you you should be talking about xdr and 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 not edr it's it's at xd uh, you know edr plus uh, ndr is xdr so which helps you now uh, or enables you to react to to these uh, bad actors who are now not only really using malicious software but also uh, or, or non malware attacks using fileless uh, attacks where in they use legitimate uh, authorized applications and protocols to to breach your your networks right so this is the way to go uh, if you talk about uh, your modern day uh, or how your security operation uh, security oper operating center should now evolve into it, it's 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 more about having an xdr in place right so so that's all i have for you for today uh, and i'll hand it over uh, back to the panel. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. D'Souza, for your insightful uh, presentation. Uh, now we will make, move to the next segment of our webinar, which is a panel discussion on the topic, uh, recalibrating security operations in new normal. Uh, to start with, uh, before starting the panel discussion, I would request all the panelists to please uh, kindly in, unmute your mics so that we can hear you properly. Thank you. Uh, so apart from the devastation that the pandemic has created, 2020 is also seen as the year with highly sophisticated cyber attacks. So the question that I would like to ask with our panelists is what are the major threats that government agencies are experiencing and what are the challenges surrounding mitigating the same? So uh, since we have some of the eminent uh, personalities from the government department, uh, I would like to... Mr. Singh, uh, as uh, the CISO UPPPL, sir, thank you so much for joining. Could you share your thoughts on the same? So what are the major threats that the government agencies are experiencing? Uh, what are the current challenges surrounding mitig mitigating some of these threats? Good evening, all of you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for, I mean, this wonderful presentation and and uh, allowing me to join and express my thoughts on the security uh, part. We at UPPCL have data centers, and cloud presence and uh, other uh, IT systems in place, and they are outsourced. So we are a very diversified uh, kind of uh, ecosystem here because uh, at, at several places we operate our IT system. So it is really complex from the perspective of uh, security and to manage all those things together because systems evolved over the period of last decade and uh, uh, many times the the security part was particularly and not that much cared and and uh, it should have been like that so what i would say that uh, the normal as mentioned by the other fellows the security threats are there like when somewhere we are worried about that and other malware attacks so and Till now, since we have been operating in a in a different kind of protected environment, like we have MPLS, our own this thing, so we were largely insulated from the internet uh, side attacks. So if that is in place, uh, so uh, that helps you. Uh, meanwhile, to tighten our security uh, systems, we have, uh, I mean, uh, we have basically. Uh, we have circulated the uh, security controls we have made in place those uh, security uh, controls top 20 security controls so that there is awareness among uh, the users and end users and the uh, it it guys here 
so they can they basically uh, and uh, i mean can, uh, include all all the normal things uh, in the security controls cover including inventory of authorized and unauthorized devices i mean data recovery capability wireless defense control incident response and management data loss prevention and and so on and so forth so what i would uh, I like to say here from the perspective of being in a government utility that if we uh, if we uh, i mean make the security perspective uh, i mean widespread and create awareness among the users that helps because uh, my my view is if the users are aware and they normally do not allow uh the others to operate from their systems so you are largely insulated particularly when you are on mpls and and outside the internet kind of thing you do not use internet to access your systems so that way we operate however we have uh, different i mean systems in our own data centers to protect our it systems like uh, we have uh, i mean Uh, system, uh, we have, uh, I mean, security systems from IBM and like Seam and Soar, and also we also have network behavioral tools, uh, analysis tools from Cisco, and like like others. So uh, I mean, we are worried about the Cisco, uh, security landscape, but, uh, uh, but we think we have done some uh, some work. and we look forward to include more so that's from my side thank you thank you mr singh for your for your uh, valuable inputs uh, we have with us uh, mr dr bal singh rajput from maharashtra so uh, mr guradia since you are also there and you have heard uh, sir how he was speaking and his um, issues so could you share your uh, insights on uh, how the posture Uh, uh, could be should be in in a, in a government organization and what are the critical things that should be focused in the initial stages yeah so i think uh, you know there there are multiple phases so number one is you know your attack surface right there has to be a clear definition and it is almost impossible to identify what is your attack surface right which can uh, which can start right from your end point uh, to the network maybe to the data center and cloud right like it is rightly said that previously it was data centers now there are centers of data right so data is everywhere and information is everywhere right and your attack pattern is not going to repeat i can i can uh, confidently say that that the way attack was done maybe 7 days back if the attack happens today it is not going to be in the same form the second observation which i have is uh, as mentioned by stephen also that it is known that people will try to attack you from outside right uh, it is a very well known even if you ask somebody who is novice uh, who has just completed his graduation in it the attacks can happen you know from the attackers who are there outside but we have seen changing patterns where lot of attacks are happening basically from the insiders right and when i say insiders it could be your apps and okay which you are actually using to protect your environment rather than uh, 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 you know trying to basically attack right so they take uh, you know control of those tools and try to attack so what is happening is uh, basically the first step is can i identify what the security risk is right and we have seen many many organizations uh, basically failing yeah, foremost in identifying what the security threat is and that can be could be because of many many issues as i rightly pointed out number of devices the the attack surface which is there which is which is very very wide and lot of attack basically happening from internal sources rather than external sources so i think uh, the soc primarily from from that perspective uh, i would say it is literally impossible to identify each and every aspect of why the security risk is there right 
So you need tools to one number one minimize that. Okay, by by uh, trying to basically analyze it every second. I would say what is happening in your environment. The second part is uh, let's say if you are not able to basically identify and 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 prevent it proactively, uh, then comes the detection part, right? In terms of whether you are able to detect it at the right point in time, okay? Uh, when when it actually happened in your environment, and then you used the tools to basically protect. Now, if uh, let's say you are not able to detect also, and and it does happen with best of the organizations. Uh, can you respond to it immediately and basically try to resolve the challenge so that you know your impact is very very minimal or you try to recover you know from that particular aspect so the third phase is respond and recover right so these are the three uh, you know areas which are there and obviously uh, you know the security pattern has to be more intrinsic okay where uh, every tool which you implement should be secure by design and that is where i say this word very very responsibly that whatever you implement in your organization has to be secure by design so our our uh, impetus as an organization okay uh, as vmware as a technology partner uh, is obviously number one is to help uh, the identify the risks which are there by analyzing the environment every uh, second and in case uh, if if still there is a failure and the attacker is smarter than what you are in the technology then how do we help you to basically detect and respond right even after that phase is if there is a case to recover saying that all your systems are locked down and you are not able to work we do have a set of technology partners uh, you know who can go on site and help basically to recover from that particular attack itself right so you know i would say intrinsic security secure by design and zero trust security framework which basically cover should cover all the aspects okay right from your endpoint to network to data center and the cloud right and that is where uh, you know stephen also mentioned about the xgr piece i think that 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 should help uh, the organizations in my perspective well, thank you thank you mr gurudia uh we have with us mr uh, uh, arvind dat abdali dig itbsf so could you give give your uh, thoughts because 2020 apart from the pandemic there we have also seen a lot of uh, sophisticated cyber security attack cyber attack and uh, what is your thoughts uh, about uh, some of these attacks and how are you securing your organization and what is the situation well, well um i like to state that uh, we have uh, uh, these challenges because uh, new new type of attacks are uh, actually coming so basically uh, as far as the infrastructure is concerned for a security organization like us so we have our uh, centralized systems which are uh, uh, in house uh, hosted in our own data center where we have a uh, Uh, all role based uh, security and uh, where we have actually uh, different uh, segments infrastructure segments we have created and we have created workflows only those process flows and uh, authorized flows so that no unauthorized flow goes from x to y server uh, without any purpose so these kind of uh, you know uh, 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 bindings we have created in the architecture by designing then uh, we have a uh, role controls that uh, the individual user who logs in on, onto the system has uh, his role and uh, he is abided by the role and his roles uh, will restrict him uh, to the kind of work he is supposed to do and third is that the network our network is a air gapped kind of a network so we have a side to side vpn and uh, we don't uh, encourage uh, people using any external device on our network so we plugged our network on the level of usb and other things so as far as the centralized network is concerned uh, the kind of security we try to implement we are able to kind of you know maintain it uh, but thereafter 
what has happened is that uh, there are a number of uh, applications which have been uh, you know uh, processed and uh, which uh, we are supposed to use the government is uh, taking a lot of initiatives to digitize various processes and then you have to go online to work on that for example your bank account for your railway reservation for all kinds of work which is uh, related to you know the journal uh, system of the government where you have to go out of your system and work so for that system you have to actually jump out on the internet to work so uh, that is the area i think uh, which is uh, very challenging and uh, any kind of uh, threat uh, uh, prevention uh, you have to uh, you know be very careful and uh, a lot of awareness uh, i believe is required at all levels so that uh, uh, these uh, challenges could be met uh, mostly i think uh, the phishing and uh, advanced uh, persistent threats uh, are uh, the threats which are uh, very common and uh, which has to be actually addressed and uh, can be addressed only by the uh, bringing about awareness at the user level and uh, the user has to be very very careful because the user is also quite of in a fix because nowadays every account needs uh, internet and you uh, plus uh, because of this uh, pandemic uh, everything is going online so so many th questions mails bank accounts everything comes on the mail and a person is also confused ki which is a authorized mail which is an unauthorized mail which is a targeted attack which is not a targeted attack so these kind of challenges are there with each and every individual including a, maybe a security personnel himself so a, a person has to be very very cautious about that that is what i have to say i think absolutely uh, thank you sir thank you thank you mr dad for raising some of the most important uh, points here and issues bringing awareness at the user level is one of the most important thing that you have just said and uh, now i would like to move to uh, dr bal singh rajput uh, hello sir uh, welcome uh, i would like to ask you sir uh, the same yeah. uh, question from your organization's perspective that how what is your overview of the rising security th threats and what are the major concerns at your uh, organization and how are you mitigating some of these yeah 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 good evening ankush uh, thank you for uh, uh, inviting me for this uh, conference first of all uh, i would like to uh, tell that the most of the government organizations which i have been working uh, all the infra and all the tools software hardware the network is not comprehensively covered uh, from security uh, perspective so it's not the case that each and every infra each and every network is covered and is connected or is basically monitored through sock in government what happens the each and each project is implemented and for the same project the sock knock or maybe dashboarding is done so we have to first of all we have to look into from an integrated and comprehensive approach presently most of the organizations in government do not have that due to that we have different verticals different projects and different systems that are working in a single organization for second uh, the issue uh, from recalibrating point of view uh, is that third parties so what we have uh, been observing is that even though we managed our networks and our infra in best of the way but the third parties their softwares their infra and their people is also a biggest threat to government organizations because we only onboard the uh, vendors which are selected through online bidding process but their third party the software their hardware their infra is dependent on many other uh, uh, companies who are supplying uh, their services to the vendor so their verification and their processes their security measures is also a, a kind of overlapping that we are 
poor looking and that's a major uh, thing that a soft person or uh, it's an organization we have to look into this matter so that most of the uh, you know, uh, incidents or most of the uh, uh, events that we categorize as normal may be abnormal or may cause some kind of damage third issue uh, from organizational point of view and from the security operation center's point of view is an internal threat and in government it's not an uh, uh, the way the uh, the it organizations function and the way government organization functions government organizations main business is to deliver their services it and the uh, taking uh, security of it infrastructure is 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 not the main uh, um, uh, objective of the project but it's in the side one we have to deliver the government what your services the organization is delivering in that in this case what happens is that we are not putting lot of efforts about awareness and training on the people who are working on the system and the people who are in the organizations so intentionally there are few people who are not obeying the security policies and the uh, procedures of the uh, uh, soft team or maybe policy team and there are few who are compromised or they are unintentionally not knowing uh, about the systems and they are uh, spreading uh, kind of or they are the threat because they know new though they they know nothing and that is the uh, problem to the organization so insider threat uh, is very difficult to be uh, tackled and uh, what has happened uh, that due to covid most of the uh, things which were no uh, just someone talked that uh, yeah, i think sunil has talked about three things one is uh, zero trust another is security by design and third thing is uh, the uh, air gap network and you know uh, but in covid situations we have to work in collaborative manner we have to go on uh, no internet to connect to the employees to connect to the people to connect to the uh, people for their services so it's 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 not a single organizations use or single platform or a single network that we can uh, have a, a security by design or uh, we can have a zero trust network because it's possible where the organization is only inward facing and have a limited pool of employees and limited uh, infra and services but the organization suppose like a police we have to reach out to the people we have different infra different services different uh, platforms we are integrating and collaborating with each other uh, for delivering better services it becomes difficult because others burden is also my burden because that a lateral entry is possible of any kind of threat vector into my network so uh, that that uh, uh, thing also should be uh, taken into consideration uh, then uh, last one is the uh, network and it infra mm. is is not uh, uh, i think so now placed at one place or is having uh, uh, a SOC team is having overview or entire uh, that stack because there are some governance issues uh, in in government uh, organizations the uh, go issue of governance of the infra and the operations and uh, uh, softwares is, is quite uh, difficult because establishment and supervision over the people is by different department supervision over the infra and the softwares is by different uh, department of the project lead and actual operations are conducted by uh, you know uh, uh, different people because suppose you take law enforcement example operations are conducted by the uh, police but the infra is looked after by some it people and the establishment part the people who are appointed and training and all these things happens is with the establishment department. So coordination this uh, is 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 uh, is key uh, for achieving uh, what we say uh, zero uh, kind of events in our network and in our uh, infra, and that is the uh, role of SOC that SOC should provide inputs to the establishment and operations branch that these are the events these are the uh, uh, anomalies that we are finding and how to loop it. And that should percolate into the training and awareness section. So here, 
the coordination and uh, uh, what you say integrating these two three branches or different verticals that are in the government need to be brought together these are the four issues uh, uh, briefly i will cover only uh, two things uh, regarding threat and how to mitigate so i i, I talked about the recalibrating no how sock about threats the two threats that i feel and we are facing uh, uh, as a major challenge one is data security so we have an important data but data leakage data stealing and you know uh, data uh, pilferage we can say due to you know uh, pen drives and you no know, there are different uh, you know uh, storage mediums are being used and data is being pilferaged by uh, through different ways different means by different employees ultimately it is going out of the system this is one and second is espionage operations by the uh, uh, various we can say threat uh, actors uh, particularly about government organizations so government organizations like law enforcement agencies are particularly uh, targeted uh, by different apt groups for espionage operations these are do uh, and these espionage operations are not you know uh, uh, only uh, for few days, but it's a prolonged we can say espionage operations to run uh, uh, Advanced uh, uh, Kind of malwares with the different kind of payloads and they can remain Silent for a period of time and then reactivate so these kind of espionage operations and data proliferation leakage is the major challenge in government organizations. So the, that is uh, uh, the two things First about the uh, mitigation and uh, recalibration, and another is threat uh, that I wanted to put. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Rashput. Um, uh, you talked about very elaborately on some of the issues and the importance of integrated and comprehensive approach in the government organization. You touched upon third-party infra, internal threats, and uh, data security issues and espionage operations uh, issues. And uh, Mr. Abdali also earlier talked about phishing, uh, phishing and APT threats. So um, I would like to take uh, these uh, uh, issues with our technology experts, Mr. Mohit or Mr. Nilesh, if you could uh, share your thoughts on how to mitigate these and um, how we can work to such scenarios in the government organizations. Sure. Uh, so. Great. First, good evening, Ankush, and uh, good evening to esteemed panelists, uh, and uh, thanks for the attendees to be there for the call. So I'm Mohit McCall. Uh, you know, I'm a CTO with the Techme Technology, one of the young startup, uh, you know, specifically looking into the cybersecurity initiative in the government, in the enterprises. And I, uh, I really am delighted with the insights which, you know, uh, you know, Dr. Dajput, Mr. A.P. Singh, and the Dr. Uh, Mr. Abdali also brought in, and they are absolutely right when they raise that the new uh, dynamics of a cyber security threat. See, you know, the cyber security threats will keep on evolving as we all agree. But some, uh, like, you know, last year, 2020, uh, you know, some of the specific events has also happened. Actually, you know, this pandemic across has brought some of the known issues also back into the contention because suddenly the ent entire paradigm of security posture has changed for certain organizations which was not prepared for that. Suddenly, a lot of digital channels has opened up, which has uh, enabled, uh, you know, suddenly CISOs has to look into uh, the business continuity as well as preventing against the new threats. So uh, all these concerns uh, in, a, in a crisp manner, see, if I have to put across is that, you know, uh, we have to first acknowledge that the new normal, as the, our topic also says. Uh, so one of the survey done by the renowned, uh, 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 you know, analyst McKenzie, which also says that uh, you know the new digital platforms or the new behavior of our users is going to continue even after the pandemic because you know this is one of the key criteria people will keep using the remote work so you keep using the new digital channel which has opened so obviously when we have to work it out a plan uh, to fortify the security grains so right now we may have worked around uh, some of the uh, short gap arrangement or uh, some of the quick fixes to address some of the new things which we have to do the, to make sure the digital channels are running. But we uh, definitely look forward to accessing and knocking out some of the networks 
um, and the hotspots which are not required, which we may have to enable. So reassessing the entire security infrastructure is important. Um, uh, you know, fortifying the security gains, correct, uh, which we have to do to address the digital channel. Anticipating, you know, the next normal and, you know, as Mr. Rajput said that, you know, the risk pertaining to the supply chain, third parties, your partner interactions is also very important. So having the standard SOP procedure for all these integrations is going to be extremely, extremely important. Uh, and in finally, you know, uh, from a uh, technology per se, the technology has evolved and is evolving continuously. Uh, uh, to all these initiatives. For example, uh, the initiative of a VMware with respect to the Workspace ONE portfolio, how to scale the end user, uh, you know, onboarding to the network, uh, collaborating with the technology such as VDI to make sure that we have a terminal which we can control. And also now with the XDR approach, which Stephen has fabulously presented, how we can extend the security controls from an endpoint to the network and create a the, uh, you know, comprehensive detection and remediation strategy. These all are uh, going to be the crucial aspect of uh, designing the security. Yeah, that's for me, Ankush, uh, considering the time. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much uh, for uh, um, sharing your views, uh, new behavior to continue after pandemic. I mean, it's really, really uh, very insightful. And uh, how, how and the focus should be to be accessed the entire industry. And uh, before uh, um, reaching out to Mr. A.P. Singh, I would like to uh, have thoughts of uh, Mr. Gurudia. And um, if you can share your thoughts and uh, also one of the questions that I would like to ask you, how Carbon Black helps with offline or on-prime uh, environments? Yes, so, you know, as it has been mentioned, uh, the XDR is, is the answer to whatever broad range of security challenges we've been talking about, right? Whether it is at the endpoint or the network, or if you are trying to analyze, which is very, very important from the security operation center perspective, XDR is a single tool which can help you to do that, right? And the product which can match what an XDR, what is expected out of an XDR is carbon black. Right, it's, it's VMware is one of the latest acquisition, but it is not only our acquisition, we've continuously working on evolving that particular technology, okay, which, which can basically help you to write from analyzing to detect and then also respond, right, and recover if there are any kind of attacks which are there. So, you know, considering whatever the eminent panelists said and uh, you know, whatever was the expectation, I would say carbon black is a technology, okay, which which uh, starts from the analysis phase in terms of analyzing the patterns of attacks which are happening. Uh, not only that, it can basically help you, uh, uh, you know, to detect in terms of what is what is happening, and then obviously, you know, respond to whatever action or whatever events which are there, right? So Carbon Black is a XGR product. Uh, you know, people looking at an extensive uh, portfolio of uh, security technologies uh, to cover the entire enterprise. I think Carbon Black can be the answer. That's your since we throughout the uh, panel and uh, the discussions we have on SOC, and a lot of issues have been raised and uh, very insightful explanations from our technology partners. So what what is your uh, overview? Uh, when we talk about SOC? Yeah, when we talk about SOC, there's still the concept of SOC and how it should be implemented as an organization, uh, you know, uh, in a comprehensive manner in government sector, is still evolving. Most of the uh, technical organizations, they have uh, a uh, good SOC operations and the team to look after that. But in government organizations, uh, barring few uh, security organizations, this concept of a comprehensive uh, uh, security operations center to look after all the events in network and in your applications is still evolving, it's not uh, fully evolved. First and second, the, uh, an integrated approach uh, to all this uh, is, is needed. Fourth thing is that internal threat and supply chain and third party. So uh, the, uh, one of the technology partners mentioned that 
the third party and supply chain uh, should also be verified and uh, that need to be taken care of and the insider threat or we can say is not due to uh, intention intentional uh, actions but unintentional actions or or lack of knowledge also uh, causing great harm uh, in government sector so these are uh, the uh, few things that we should look into while recalibrating the uh, soft operations or uh, we, we should we should think about when we are uh, thinking about government organizations and how soft should operate and lastly that uh, we should more uh, look into from APTs and SPNH point of view uh, because that is the real concern from most of the government organizations which are working in sensitive areas. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dr. Rajput. Uh, Mr. Singh, uh, do you also think that uh, the concept of SOC is, is still evolving and there is a lot to catch up in the government sector? Yes, uh, you are right. Uh, concept of stock basically needs some kind of expertise which is generally not available inside the organizations uh, owned by government and uh, generally we have to go for the external resources that can help uh, to operate the SOC. but uh, I mean slowly I mean gradually they, uh, we are going for uh, SOC and recently as yes, we have and installed in our own our own organization. I mean, uh, the SOC center, we are operating primarily for our ERP systems. So, but that is very much required. My view is it is uh, in fact inevitable and we should go for uh, SOC kind of thing that for two reasons. One is it creates a lot of, uh, I mean, uh, sensitivity towards security part and other is, I mean, uh, the the regular uh, threat prevention mechanism is in place. So uh, SOC is a requirement of today and uh, organization should go for it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Singh. Uh, Mr. Abda Abdali, are you there, sir? I would like to take your few minutes. Yeah. So uh, since we talked about the importance of SOC and, the, and uh, I would like to uh, ask you take your views on the same like how do you see the future of SOC integrated in the government organization and uh, what would be the role of organizations vs armed force organizations like BSF which are so important uh, for our nation uh, well here I want to state that we SOC uh, as far as the uh, centralized system is there where you have a big office and all then uh, like, uh, we have our data center and we are hosting the entire data so we have a we have a complete you know uh, security uh, plan in our place and now this security plan cannot be implemented without you know uh, getting the information of the stakeholders which are in the security plan all the appliances all the all the uh, equipment which is placed in it so SOC plays a very important role and uh, needs to be established uh, if uh, somebody has not established and knock and other things are also very essential now as far as the satellite uh, small small offices are concerned where uh, there is a very less uh, infrastructure although the data can be very useful you cannot establish a SOC at all locations so this is a very big challenge because you cannot create a grid of all those locations together in your organization because you have a small satellite organization. So, so you will have to you know uh, look into something else for that or you have to connect your central SOC to that. But now here uh, the challenge is that the, uh, there are some applications which are basically uh, uh, the organization's uh, key uh, uh, applications uh, which outside the organization doesn't have to play any role and for the security uh, organizations uh, you uh, uh, you know cannot share that data so that kind of is a confidential or you can say unclassified data so that data will have to remain uh, within our uh, uh, you know uh, periphery of our security so that uh, network we manage centrally and we ensure whatever is best possible to check into each and every component of it and each and every log of every every endpoint the behavior 
we observe. But the thing is the then there are some applications for which the individual has to go for his own personal work. For example, his own mobile for which he is talking now or for for his own you know services which he wants to use the government services. Now for that then uh, a different kind of uh, security scenario is to be established. So generally uh, security forces we have two different networks. Uh, right. uh, where, whereas in a, uh, a general corporate one network is there and you have created both the networks in the same same set. But uh, in our kind of a setup, we actually physically create two setups. So that kind of a challenge is there to create a, such a big setup in all government organizations, perhaps uh, may not be possible. So a uh, different kind of a approach, endpoint security uh, kind of a thing has to be kind of a established and some kind of a mechanism to check the security controls or the behavior of all the satellite office uh, equipment uh, needs to be established so that uh, if right. because the kind of sock which we are talking about uh, there is a trade off of the you know money involved in it uh, in establishing it and uh, vis a vis the kind of uh, you know um, the benefit it is going to give to that respective stakeholder so right. all these things have to be kept in mind so uh, there could be a one uh, thing advice for the uh, for the for the vendors is that they can create some kind of you know low cost uh, infrastructure whereby people can use that for small small offices where they can put it two three four uh, small uh, office network that kind of a thing or maybe uh, plug and play kind of a devices or something like that which can help them where there is a, a less of technology, uh, uh, lower level work required and a higher level work, uh, things are more transparent and easy. Uh, you can say the Manage. problems can be addressed very easily with a with a dashboard and simple kind of an architecture, something like that. That is what. Uh, right. And also, you, organizations need not have security con uh, experts also in all corners because their core work is supporting something else. And uh, now every day, some new kind of attack, new kind of uh, this is coming. So he will be totally foxed in that. So he will forget his own work and he will work out only this thing. So this uh, is a very big trade off. So some kind of flag play device and some kind of um, uh, dedication, uh, you can say, because whenever you have to actually go for a uh, implementation of a security control or something like that there is a cost and uh, government uh, has very limitations in that so this is a trade-off and it has to be addressed accordingly and right. uh, i think all stakeholders have to uh, play their role in it that's what i'm saying thank you Thank you, sir. I think you touched upon a very valid point of uh, creating a low cost intra for satellite offices as well. Um, so uh, uh, due to the paucity of time, I would like to take the last point. Uh, uh, could you uh, share your thoughts on uh, on what Mr. Abdali said and uh, Mr. Makol? Uh, do you have any uh, wind up thoughts on this? Mr. Mohit? Mr. Mohit, can you hear us? I think I think we we can't hear him. Hello. Could you take this uh, question, Mr. Guradi? I think Mr. Mukul, we are not able to. Yeah, can you hear me, Ankush? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, yeah. I got it actually. I was I was muted by the organizer, sorry, so I couldn't unmute sure, myself. Sure. Yeah. Okay, we are, we are really okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah, we're really sorry. Yes. 
Uh, sure. Uh, so I think Mr. Abdahali did the, and definitely touched upon the absolutely precise point. Uh, you know, while you know we have a fantastic technology which can uh, solve a lot of challenges, but there has to be a, a trade-off. Correct. The government has uh, uh, infrastructure which need to be reassessed, which need to be relooked. There is a shortage of a manpower or the supply. The end of the day, the technologies what we are discussing there has to be required skills which can be implemented. So that's where you know uh, uh, there is a um, uh, you know, partners such as us and the many other skilled uh, cybersecurity uh, indigenous company in India is coming up, working with the uh, technologies companies such as VMware can solve this, correct? And obviously, uh, uh, you know, specifically working in a government environment where the substantial amount of a security investment is already done, uh, you know, uh, the integration aspects need to be thought of thoroughly uh, while, you know, we are putting up additional controls, say with the HDR, uh, which is pervasive uh, across the endpoint and the networks, uh, but how those integrations will be tightly done and how the services can be optimized to deliver the end customer goal. Eventually, you know, uh, uh, you know what I want to put across is that you know, uh, one we once we put the technology uh, in place, uh, uh, in a so recalibrations point of view, we need to really think of how we will. Now do the threat intelligence services basis upon these technologies, how we will actually set up the complete SOPs. Uh, so at this point of a time, uh, every government should have a documented SOP approach for every incident they see. And then obviously a complete incident and response plan which need to be set up. So a combination of our technology and the services um, and you know uh, the, assessing the infrastructure and plugging in the gap optimally can be the answer to what Mr. Abdali said. Uh, and uh, you know, obviously, you know the, uh, the the technology partners such as VMware can definitely plug in the gaps, and the system integrators can definitely implement it optimally to uh, answer the cost concerns from many of the customers. Right, Nilesh. Thank we you. we can't hear you, Mr. Mr. Karodia. I think you are on mute. Right? Yeah, so well said, yeah. I would say uh, well said all the panelists and uh, Mohit also. So I would like to summarize by saying it's an ecosystem effort, right? And when I say ecosystem effort, uh, ideally it starts with what is already existing as Mohit mentioned, plus what the technology vendor can add to that, because as, as we said that threats are always evolving. And uh, the landscape of uh, information access is always widening, right? So it would never be a one technology answer. It has to be an ecosystem answer, right? And uh, the ecosystem has to be implemented well. That's that's the most important aspect, right? Uh, and that is where you know the the partnership becomes very very important. That you have the right set of technology know how to implement uh, what whatever has been envisioned, right? Because when you envision, obviously, you you envision something which is very thorough, right? But always there is a challenge with the execution. Okay, so it's as I said, it would be an ecosystem effort, uh, and which when I say ecosystem, it is also the the customer or the government agency who's part of it plays a very very prominent role. Okay, in in envisioning the thought process, and then the technology vendor and the partner getting. As a technology company, our effort on a daily basis is how do we make the technology more thorough, okay, so that it can benefit, uh, you know, the end organizations. And we have a global R&D, including, you know, around 3,000 people based out of India who are working on a daily basis to basically make the technology more uh, pervasive and uh, more, more uh, strong and stringent and meet the demands of what the market is expecting, right? So... Hopefully, we are able to live up to the expectation, and we would like to work closely with with all the uh, you know ecosystem and the enterprises who want to adopt security practices. Mr. Gurudev, for your time and uh, your insights, uh, this is it from us. Thank you, all the panelists and viewers, for taking out your uh, valuable time and for being uh, attending the webinar. This is it from us. Keep following us for new updates. We will soon be uh, available with another insightful conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to all the panelists for taking their time. Thank you very much. Thank you.